Oh, crikey, it's hot. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and in this video, I wanna share with you my seven top vegetables that are the easiest to grow in a hot summer. A few of these veggies you might never have heard of, and one might completely surprise you. Let's get into it. Now we live in a subtropical climate where temperatures can get into the mid 40s. But as you can see, we still have a lot growing on. But it wasn't always like this because in the early days when we first started growing our food here, we began with traditional greens like lettuce, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, English spinach. These crops are fine during our cooler months, but we quickly found out that they couldn't be grown through summer. Bummer. To grow greens all year round, we needed to find crops that not only did well in the heat, but that we also liked to eat. So yes, we do grow a ton of produce, but not all veggies are considered easy to grow. For example, these gourds here require a trellis and a fair bit of space to grow them effectively. But the list of veggies I'm gonna give you now, they don't require anything special at all. Number one. Perpetual spinach is a variety of chard, like Swiss or rainbow chard, and giant chard, except better. Look, all chards are good, but perpetual spinach leaves taste more like regular spinach. Mild, not bitter, and doesn't have a slimy sap when cooked or cut in salads, unlike some other spinach substitutes. The stems can be used like celery, and our favorite way to cook this heat-loving crop is stir-fry. Perpetual spinach is incredibly hardy, making it easy to grow. And it's not just heat tolerant either, it suffers the cold really well. It's a great all year rounder. Due to the cut and come again nature, just one plant is usually enough to feed a family. Number two, Egyptian walking onions. Remember my how to grow a ton of onions video where I deliberately planted these walking onions in the center? Well. The old brown onions are long gone and can't be grown at this time of year. But this crop of walking onions is now left to take over the bed and be harvested as needed. Walking onions spread through a top growing bulb that eventually bends over and plants itself. We still have some brown onions in storage, but they're running out fast. So this crop here will come in handy. These onions are the easiest onion in the world to grow. They love the heat and apparently they even grow in the snow, which makes them a great all-rounder for those who live in extreme conditions. And yes, they do taste just like a regular onion. Number three, corn or maize. Now I know most of you will be pretty familiar with this crop, but what you might not know is that it originated in southern Mexico around 10,000 years ago and has spread around the globe to become one of the world's most important foods with way over a billion tonnes of it grown each year. Besides taste and nutritional value, one of the main reasons why corn is so popular is due to its growing versatility, particularly in hot, harsh conditions. And that's why 900 million of the poorest people on earth rely heavily on this crop because without this easy to grow food source, many would starve. We can also grow corn through our subtropical winter here, but we tend not to because it grows stunted and it doesn't thrive in the cooler weather so we grow it in summer only. Number four, Egyptian spinach. If you wanna try something that the pharaohs were munching on back when they built the pyramids, try growing Egyptian spinach. This ancient but delicate and mild heat adoring green is still popular in the Middle East today and it's so easy to grow that we don't even bother to try anymore. It just comes up on its own each summer like clockwork once the mercury starts rising. We love Egyptian spinach in salads, stir fries and soups and it happens to be one of the most nutritious foods on the planet with roughly four times the goodness of regular spinach. So imagine how big your muscles could grow with that. Popeye, 
eat your heart out. Number five, rat's tailed radish. Check this out. They're supposed to look like rat's tails, but a pity a rat with a tail like that. They're seed pods from a radish plant that's grown for these pods and not for the root. The root never develops like regular radish, so it's inedible. But the massive, long, tasty pods it produces more than makes up for the lack of root. Regular radish can't be grown here at this time of year. We've got some over there, they're dead as doornails. But this type of radish does. And we can still get our zesty, spicy radish hit by just eating these seed pods, either cooked in stir fries or whatever in soups, or even eaten raw. The young tender ones are particularly good raw in salads. And right next to the rat's tails growing in the same bed, we have number six, Kang Kong. Sounds like a movie about a giant kangaroo, doesn't it? Kang Kong, or water spinach, is an Asian vegetable that grows natively and easily in their waterways over in the Philippines, Thailand, Vietnam, and other tropical and subtropical Asian countries. It grows so easily, in fact, that it's been classified as a noxious weed in many places around the world, as it can clog up water habitats. But here's a big tip, don't grow it in water. Kangkong grows really well in free draining soil as long as it's watered regularly. A great way to grow this prolific green is in a self-watering wicking bed like this one here from Birdies. Or you could do the same in a medium-sized self-watering container. Growing Kangkong like this is perfect because it's easy to manage, the plant still gets the moisture it needs and there's no risk of breeding mosquitoes. It's so tasty that I even had to cover the crop with this net to stop the possums, wild turkeys, and can 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 kangaroos from eating it. Number seven, sweet potato. Oh, how sweet it is to have a tuber vegetable growing through our hot, sweltering summers. A staple food for many islanders around the Pacific, sweet potato originated in South America and spread like wildfire around the 1400s, not just because it's so easy to grow, but also for its wholesome food qualities. So much so that both China and Japan started farming sweet potato as insurance against famine when other crops like rice failed. Sweet potato grows so well here on our property that we take a fair bit of time to control it because if we didn't, it would take over the whole vegetable garden. It's naturally pest resistant and its thick growth smothers weeds, making it easy to look after. We grow sweet potato all year round, but in cooler climates, it can be grown as an annual through the warmest part of the year. It's propagated really easily by just taking a cutting bung it into a container or garden bed, keep it watered, and it will take off. Besides the tubers, the leaves are also edible and can be used in cooking, just like regular spinach, or the young leaves used raw in salads. I know I said seven, but I just had to show you this bonus vegetable, number eight, kale. And this is the one that I thought might surprise. Because many of you would know that kale, being a brassica, is a more traditional crop growing for its cold tolerance. However, we grow kale because it suffers our heat and is one of the only traditional leafy vegetables that can. Plus, it tastes amazing and is high in nutrient value. We usually start kale in our subtropical winter and then let it grow right into our summer which means we almost get a whopping 12 months out of this fantastic vegetable. Yes, I did say kale suffers our heat. It doesn't love the hot weather, and we do need to keep the water up and harvest regularly to keep new young leaves coming through. Growing it out of season like this can also make it a target for chewing pests. So if that happens, just drape some insect netting over it. Nevertheless, the sheer fact that we can grow kale right into the middle of our hot summer is a testament to how easy to grow and tough this great vegetable is. So I say, hail the kale.
and they were my eight top vegetables that are really easy to grow in a hot summer. Do you have any veggies that you'd like to add to the list? Whack them down in the comments section below. And of course, if you've got any questions, whack them down there too. I'll do my best to answer them. If you like this video, give it a flaming hot, red hot thumbs up and share the video around because that helps my channel heaps. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. <sighs> Crikey. I even had to put sunscreen in my hair to stop my bald patch from burning. <sighs> All the things you do as you get older. <sighs> I'm getting out of the sun. <laughs>